السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ وقفا وصلاۃ وسلام علی سیدن المصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وعلى آلہ و اصحابہ وبارک وسلم تسلیما کثیرا کثیرا اما بعد فقد قال اللہ تبارک و تعالی فی القرآن المجید اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان اللہ لا یغفر ان یشرک به و یغفر ما دون ذالك لمن یشاء و من یشرک باللہ فقد ضل ضلالا بعیدا صدق اللہ العظیم الحمدللہ ادھا فضل کرم ان احسان و فاللہ تعالی اللہ تعالی has gathered us in his house on this مبارک day of جمعہ And it is only with the tawfiq from Allah Ta'ala that we are allowed to fulfill this great obligation of Jumu'ah. If we have to make shukar to Allah Ta'ala our entire lives for the iman that Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with and the tawfiq to carry out good deeds, that shukar of ours will never be enough. Even if we have to spend every breath in thanking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So we want to make mudakara inshallah of two incidents that had taken place in the Mubarak life of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first incident is narrated by Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala an, wherein he mentions that once we were sitting with Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a group of us, And amongst us was Sayyiduna Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala an and Sayyiduna Umar radiyallahu ta'ala an. Now we will find this in many many ahadith where the sahaba radiyallahu anhum mentioned that we were sitting with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and amongst us was Abu Bakr and Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah. From there we gauge that even amongst sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum they understood the rank of these two sahaba. So khair continuing, so he says, all of a sudden Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up and he went away. We carried on sitting, waiting for Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to return. However, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't return for quite a while. So he says we started getting worried that did something happen to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Was he attacked? Because at that time the enemies of Islam were looking for every opportunity to try and cause harm. So he says, I was one of the first people who became perturbed, became worried. And like this many others also became worried. So we left the masjid to go and search for Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says that I went out and I came to an orchard that belonged to one of the Ansari Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And I circled this orchard trying to find an entrance. But I came across a little stream that was making its way into the orchard. And in his own words, he says, I gathered myself, in other words, I made myself small like a fox and I fitted through that hole where the stream was flowing and I went into the orchard. So when I went in, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately called out to me and he said, is that Abu Huraira? So I replied in the affirmative. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me what is the matter? So I explained that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you were sitting with us and you went away, you didn't return, we became worried, something may have happened to you. So with this worry, I came out to search for you. And there are others also that are behind me, they too are searching, they too are looking for you. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an his Na'alain Mubarak, his, his Mubarak shoes, he gave it 
to Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and he said to him that, O oh Abu Huraira, take these shoes of mine and go out of the orchard and whomsoever you meet, whoever you meet who has testified that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah Ta'ala and that Huzur Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah Ta'ala. In other words, our second kalima, whoever has testified this with yaqeen in his heart, then give him the glad tiding of Jannat. So Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, very excited, he, he goes out to give this glad tiding to the ummah. And as he comes out, he meets Amirul Mu'mineen Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala asks him, what's it with these shoes? In other words, what are you doing with the shoes Mubarak of Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So he gave Umar radiallahu ta'ala the glad tidings first. That this is what Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has entrusted me with, that I should go out and inform that whoever has brought iman with yaqeen, then give that person the glad tidings of Jannat. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he gave Abu Huraira radiallahu an one shot on his chest. Abu Huraira radiallahu an fell down. And then he told him, Irje, so go back. In other words, go back to Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Huraira radiallahu an went back into the garden. And he, in his own words, he says that I was almost going to cry. I was almost going to cry. And Umar radiallahu an was coming behind me. And he was right behind. And Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me, that, What's the matter, O Abu Huraira? So I explained to Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what had transpired. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then questioned Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And said, oh Umar, why did you do this? So Umar radiallahu an asked Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, did you entrust Abu Huraira with this? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said yes. So Umar radiallahu an made a suggestion. He said that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rather don't give them this glad tidings. Otherwise, people will trust only on this glad tidings. In other words, they will leave out a'mal. So Umar radiallahu an was keeping in mind many people who had just accepted Islam, etc. They may not understand the wisdom in the words of Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard this from Umar radiallahu ta'ala, then he said, yes, leave them on a'mal. Leave them to carry out their good deeds. But we learn from that hadith sharif that if a person brings iman and he has got firm conviction, then definitely he will go to Jannat. There is no two ways about it. A person who brings iman, he has got yaqeen and he passes away on iman, then definitely he is going to go to Jannat. Ulama explained to us that either he will have to pay for his gunas first, if a person has got sins, then he will have to get cleansed. We must always understand that when a believer is put through what we call punishment in the qabr or in jahannam, Allah mahfazna min, then that is not to torture the believer. It's unlike a disbeliever. When a disbeliever is put into Jahannam, it is to punish him, to torture him. But not a believer. A believer is too beloved to Allah Ta'ala. When a believer is put into some type of what we call punishment, it is in order to cleanse him. To understand by way of an example, a lady is diagnosed with cancer. Cancer of the chest, she is diagnosed. And she is told that, look, you have to remove your chest. So the removal of that chest, whether you must remove or not, I am not saying that. I am just explaining what normally happens. right? So when 
the surgeon or when her family is advising her to remove the chest, when the surgeon is removing the chest, he's not doing it out of hatred. He's doing it to cleanse the patient of the cancer. Hmm? So just like that, when a believer has to go through some difficulty in the qabr or in the akhirat, then that is not to cause harm and pain to the believer. But rather it is to cleanse that believer of whatever guna he may have in him, thereafter he will be put into jannat. So even the hardship that the believer goes through in the qabr or in jahannam, it is out of love for that believer. This is how valuable and how close and beloved a believer is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the one incident from where we learn that if a person has got iman, he passes away with iman, then definitely he will go to jannat. The second incident, Hazrat Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala, he is riding on a conveyance with Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That means the both Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Hazrat Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala, they are on the same conveyance. And Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls out to him. Now although they are sitting right close to one another on one conveyance, but Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls out to him and he responds to say that I'm here, labbaik, no, I'm, I'm here, I'm listening. But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls out to him three times. And after that, Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions to him that, O oh, Mu'ad, any person who brings iman, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, a person brings iman and obviously he passes away with this iman intact. The fire of Jahannam is haram for him. Fire of Jahannam is haram for him. In other words, he will never go to the fire of Jahannam forever and ever. So these two ahadis are very very clear and these ahadis appear in Muslim Sharif they are authentic ahadis it's very very clear that if a person passes away with Iman then this person is guaranteed Jannat and this person is guaranteed safety from the fires of Jahannam Alhamdulillah Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with Iman and we make dua that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala use us for the hidayat of mankind that many many more people also bring iman however we also know that we have an enemy the enemy is shaitan shaitan has got an accomplice which we call our nafs our carnal desires our animal instincts and shaitan uses this nafs against us now shaitan is also aware of these ahadith. Shaitan is also aware. Shaitan is aware that if a person passes away with iman, there is no way that that person is going to be deprived of jannat. There is no way that this person is going to remain for eternity in jannah. And this doesn't make him happy. Shaitan has mentioned to Allah Ta'ala, that he is going to lead us all astray. He is going to lead us all astray. Shaitan's mission in life is to take as many people to Jahannam with him. That is his life's mission. That he wants to take as many people with him to Jahannam. So on the one side we have these glad tidings in the ahadith of Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the other side we have the warning from Allah Ta'ala in the Quran Sharif wherein Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions Inna Allah la yaghfiru ay yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika limay yasha that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not forgive shirk Mufassirin explain that this includes all forms of disbelief although shirk is mentioned but it includes all forms of disbelief. So any person who passes away without iman, there is no forgiveness for that person. 
any person who passes away without iman, there is no forgiveness for that person. A person could have been, you know, we don't want to say worst, but a person could have had many gunas. A person could have committed many, many sins. But as long as the person passes away with his or her iman intact, eventually this person will go to Jannat. And this person will never spend eternity in Jahannam. But on the other hand, a person could have been very cultured, very well-mannered, outwardly good character. But this person passes away without iman. There is no way that this person is going to go to Jannat and there is no way that this person is going to ever come out of Jannam. The reality of this must sink into us. That the most important thing to us is our Iman. Generally, Jamaats go around, they speak on, about Iman. Our ulama go around, speak on Iman. And to us, we feel now, this is, now we heard this topic many a time. You know? The other day, Hazrat Mohan Abdul Haq Magda Sahib, now Barakatu was mentioning in his majlis, that when does a topic become old? When does a topic become old? Not to say we must stop making muzakara of it, but when does a topic become old? So the topic becomes old, when we have brought that aspect 100% into our lives. So this Iman is so important that without this Iman, Wallahi, we have nothing. Without Iman, we have nothing. A person could have enjoyed all the successes in his or her life. But if the person leaves the dunya without Iman, that person is a failure. And if a person leaves with Iman, then that is a great success. So we make dua that Allah Ta'ala keep us with Iman, Allah Ta'ala take us with Iman, Allah Ta'ala resurrect us with Iman. Now as we are saying that shaitan also is aware of this. So what shaitan needs to do for his mission to be in inverted commas successful is he needs to snatch Iman. So his gaze is on our Iman. That how can he rob us of our Iman? That is his whole plotting, planning, deception hmm, for the thousands of years that he is living. Going through every era, every situation, his mindset is how do I rob the believer of his or her Iman? Now, one is a person, Allah mahfazna min, Allah ta'ala protect us, but a person for some reason, he gets attracted to some ism, some batil, something that is incorrect. He gets attracted to it and he openly renounces deen. He openly renounces Islam. So that person... He knows he has left deen and Islam. Somewhere along the line, his conscience is, conscience is going to prick him. And you can go to him and speak to him about Iman and Islam. You can go and speak to him, Kabai, reconsider. What are your questions? What is creating a doubt in your mind? You can speak to him because he has openly left deen and Islam. Allah Ta'ala protect each and every one of us. We must never ever become complacent. Allah Ta'ala protect us. But on the other hand, a person considers himself to be a Muslim. He considers himself to be part of the Ummah. But unfortunately, he has been deceived with regards to his Aqidah. Now this person, you can't even approach him. This person actually thinks that the falsehood that he is on is correct. So this person, you can't even approach him and ask him, what are your doubts? What are your questions? 
Because to him, he feels he is still a believer. So he is not going to ever make Toba. His conscience is not going to prick him. Because he thinks he is on what is correct. And this is very dangerous for me and you. And it is the big prize for shaitan. It's a big prize for shaitan. Because once he deceives a person in this manner, now he got that person where he wants him. Or her. I remember, Hazrat Muhammad he had once mentioned to us that when the former president, not, not this one now, when Mandela had come out of prison and now they were going to form this so-called demon crisis or whatever you want to call it. So anyway, they were going to form this new government, new way of governing, etc. And the ulama were also invited to make their presentation. They were invited to make their presentation that what are the needs of the ummah. Not that any government really cares about catering for our deen. Right? But anyway, they were invited or whether they made a request or whatever it was. But Hazrat mentioned that in that meeting, now an important meeting where the ulama who were present there could have put forward certain suggestions or whatever while they were still drafting the constitution. One person who was supposed to have been a so-called scholar. So he stands up in that meeting and he makes a statement. He says that I have a problem taking this verse of the Qur'an لِذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ to the civilized world of today. Now, لِذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ this is referring to inheritance, right? where the male will receive double the share of the female. So he is saying in this meeting now, that he is supposed to have been a scholar, right? So he, he is saying that I have a problem taking this verse of the Quran Sharif to the civilized world of today. So Hazrat had commented to us after that, that where is Iman left? If the person is, he's got a problem, he's questioning an ayat of the Quran Sharif. Now where is Iman left? But to that person, if you have to speak to him, he will tell you, I am championing the cause of the Ummah. I'll give you another incident. One person was giving loans on interest. A Muslim person. He was giving people loans on interest. So one person who got caught, and now he was he had to pay this person a lot of money. So he went to Azim Wa'in Spatiya Sahib Rahmatullahi to ask for help, to speak to this person, make some sifarish, etc. This person is now charging me interest. So Hazrat told him that, see, get one, two family members or something and go to him and explain to him, okay, this is haram. Hmm? There's so much of warning mentioned in the Quran Sharif, in the Ahadith. He is a believer end of the day. It will appeal to him. Maybe he will realize his mistake. So when they went to him and they're explaining to him, okay, this is a wrong practice that you are doing. Now one is for the person to say that, look, it's my fault, my weakness, make dua for me. Right? But this person responded by saying, that, what are you all talking about? I am actually going to be rewarded by Allah Ta'ala for this. Now he is giving loans on interest, and what he is claiming? He said, no, I'm going to be rewarded by Allah Ta'ala for this. I'm going to get sawab for this. And what is his reasoning? He says, see, if you go to the bank, they are going to charge you, for example, I don't know what it was at that time, but he said, if you go to the bank, they are going to charge you 10%. Right? I am charging 7%. So in actual fact, I am saving the ummah from 3% interest. This is the logic. And if you have to ask him about his iman, he thinks he is a perfect believer. So what is happening is as we are going closer to Qiyamah, 
Shaitan also is running out of time, you know. He's running out of time. He, he wants to fulfill what he said to Allah Ta'ala, that he's going to take everybody to Jannah. So he's becoming more and more devious in his methods. And when this happens, then many a time, me and you cannot see through the, through the deception. And that's where we need our elders, we need our seniors, to work through things for us and give us direction. So that we can protect this iman of ours with the help of Allah Ta'ala. Once, as my Patel Sahib Rahmatullah was traveling, somebody had given him their vehicle. As it was going somewhere, he said, no, use my car. People love to do that. He said, no, use my car. So now, when they were traveling, there was some mist. And now you know how the windscreen goes away. And Hazrat now didn't know where's the demister in this car. It's not his car. Hmm? So he's battling now. Because he can't see. Hmm? And eventually they have to pull over and figure, figure, figure things out. So from there Hazrat explained to us. He says, see, when the mist is thick hmm? and you don't know how to demist, you can end up in an accident. Because you can't see. And this is what is happening today. There are so many fitnas, so many ideologies, so many things on the, on the net. So many things people are promoting. Sometimes people are promoting things and they are posing to be scholars also of deen. And this is not anything new. From, if you have to read up, the time of the khulafa, the khalifas, the kings, etc. There were many, many people who at that time were regarded as scholars, but they were selling the ummah. They were selling the ummah, they were misleading the khalifas, etc. So these things will happen. These things will happen. And it's going to get worse as we go towards Qiyamah. So it's very, very important that we keep taking guidance from our senior ulama, our elders, those whom we can see. They are not shifting, they are not wavering, they are remaining firm, strict. Hmm? On sirat mustaqim on the sunnah of huzur pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it is with the same fikr, most of you must be knowing, the program that is going to be taking place here tomorrow. Some of the most senior, senior most ulama of our country, the principles of our darululums, the asatiza of our ulama, our imams, people who have given their whole life to this deen. Hmm? So many of them will be gracing us, Tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, in, in this masjid. And this is the topic of discussion. That to see through this mist, to go through all this deception, the smoke screen that shaitan is spewing out. So let us all make dua firstly, that Allah ta'ala allow us to be present, and Allah ta'ala allow for us to benefit from their fuyus, from their advices, etc., and let us also make an effort to invite others that people must come for the program. I mentioned to the students and we'll conclude on this. I said to them that see, when there are so many great personalities, senior personalities, hmm, pious inshallah, pious personalities in one place, then even if you sit there and you don't understand too much, but the nur that will be generated there will definitely have a positive impact and effect on your heart, your mind, your ruhaniyat and your iman. So let us invite many to come for the program, make dua, Allah Ta'ala make it successful, tell our women folk, our children also to make dua, so many people will be traveling etc. Allah Ta'ala bring them with afiyat and Allah Ta'ala reward our akabirin at this age with this type of health etc. They are still making suffer to come and benefit me and you. Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. وآخر الدعوانان الحمد لله